In this video, we'd like to prove this statement using strong mathematical induction that every natural number is either a Fibonacci number itself or it is a sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. And this means that it's a sum of different, obviously, Fibonacci numbers. So let's first go through and gather all of the definitions or axioms that we need to prove this statement. And obviously the first thing we need is we need to know what a Fibonacci number is. The Fibonacci numbers are just the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, which is defined recursively by this equation. Fn plus 2 is equal to Fn plus 1 plus Fn. And this is true for all n greater than or equal to 0. So this is a recursive definition of the Fibonacci sequence. Now, of course, this, this is not enough to define the entire sequence because you need to have some starting points for your recurrence relation. And our assumptions then are that the first Fibonacci numbers are F0 equals 0 and F1 equal to 1. Okay, so this is the Fibonacci sequence. Now let's write down the first few terms because we're going to try to prove a statement about natural numbers um, in relation to these Fibonacci numbers. And so we need to know in particular which natural number is the first one that is not a Fibonacci number. So the Fibonacci numbers are just the numbers in this sequence. So if we just list these out, the Fibonacci numbers are, I'll write them in symbols, F0, F1, F2, F3, F4, etc. So this is just indexing the Fibonacci numbers. And based on our definition, the first two, so the 0 and 1 index are 0, 1, and then the next Fibonacci number is, is obtained by adding the two previous ones. So the next Fibonacci number, F2, is 1, and then Fibonacci number F3 is 1 plus 1, so 2. So, so far we've got all the natural numbers, so this statement isn't looking too exciting. The next Fibonacci number is going to be 3, add these together, but then the next one is 5. So the first natural number that's not a Fibonacci number itself is uh, 4, and then from here the gaps become wider. So 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and then this pattern obviously continues. You just keep adding together the two previous numbers to get the next Fibonacci number. Okay, so we are told to prove this statement using strong mathematical induction. And remember that mathematical induction comes with either two or three steps depending on how you think of it. I always think of the uh, induction step as really being two separate steps. Um, but regardless of how you number the steps of mathematical induction, the first step is always to prove the base case. And so for us, because our statement here is given in kind of two, two parts, either our natural numbers are Fibonacci numbers, or the ones that aren't are supposed to be sums of distinct Fibonacci numbers, our base case really should deal with the ones, uh, the ones that are not Fibonacci's. But let, let's just write this down. So our base case, let's start with our, our we're going to have two base cases, in other words. So let's start with n equals 0, because that's the first index number. And n equals 0 is already equal to a Fibonacci number. It's equal to f0. So this number is a Fibonacci number. All right, so that's part of our base case. So there's our first natural number that is a, a Fibonacci number. Now, as we said before, we wrote down all these Fibonacci numbers so that we could see where the uh, discrepancies start. You know, f0, 1, 2, 3, f4, those are all already the first three natural numbers, right? But then the number 4 is not a Fibonacci number. And so that's our next base case. So our base case, or the second half of our base case, is that when n equals 4, 4 itself is not a Fibonacci number, but 4 can be written as 3 plus 1, okay? And 3 plus 1 is either f4 plus f2 or f4 plus f1. And it doesn't matter which one we use. So it's either f4 plus f2 or f4 plus f1. All right, and these are both sums of distinct Fibonacci numbers. It doesn't say that the sum has to be unique. It just says that the, that the natural number is a sum of Fibonacci numbers. Okay, and so the base case is proved, or the base case is verified for both of the two cases in our, in our assumption, in our statement. Okay, now notice that another way to make four, so I'm gonna write this up here, but 4 is also 2 plus 2, of course, right? And 2 plus 2 could be represented as the Fibonacci number F3 plus itself. And so this is not allowed. So this is not allowed in 
the distinct the word distinct is telling us that we don't want this right we don't want to just multiply or we don't want to just add a Fibonacci number to itself in our distinct sum it's not allowed okay so I'll just cross this off now once we've proved our base case our next job is to state our induction hypothesis and we were even told in in the statement here to use strong mathematical induction um, so that's what we're going to do. So step two is going to be our induction hypothesis. And I'm even going to write the word here strong in parentheses. So the strong mathematical induction hypothesis says the following. It says, um, suppose that for some number m, so some number, natural number m, greater than or equal to 4, natural number, I'm talking faster than I'm writing, a natural number, let's call this m, greater than or equal to 4, then for all numbers that are between, so these are going to be k, between 0 and m, um, the number k is either a Fibonacci number or it is the sum of Fibonacci numbers. And I've left out a very important thing in my base case here. It's the sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. So I focus on this word so much that I actually forgot it. And if you do this, you just move your words around like I did. But it's got to be the sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. Okay? <clears throat> so we've proven this for M, and, or we, sorry, we have assumed this now for M. And remember that our induction hypothesis is only a valid hypothesis if, if, and if, so this is the reason that I chose M greater than or equal to 4, if we've chosen the base case, right? And so actually when I prove the base case here, um, I have actually shown... I chose the first, you know, F0, 0, but 1, 2, 3, those are all Fibonacci numbers as well. So they kind of fit in the base case in this scenario. And um, the first non-Fibonacci number was really the base case. So that's why I started with N equal to 4, or I should say M equal to 4 in my strong hypothesis here. And now for the final step, this is what I call the induction step, but really this includes the hypothesis in, in some sense and in many textbooks. But for me, step 3, I just call this induct. And what we have to do is we have to show that given using our induction hypothesis, we have to show that m plus 1 is a sum of unique Fibonacci numbers or distinct Fibonacci numbers. So um, there are actually two cases here, but we're going to consider the number, and here I mean the natural number, m plus 1. All right, and there are two cases. So case 1 is that m plus 1 is a Fibonacci number. It's possible that the next number in line is one of the Fibonacci numbers, right? In this case, there's nothing to prove, all right? So we've already, in other words, we've already proved it. So if it is a Fibonacci number, then we're done, right? So this, this part requires no work. I'll put a little box here, even though that's not the end of the total proof, but um, a little box, case 1 is done. It's a Fibonacci number. The more interesting case is when m plus 1 is not a Fibonacci number. And we'll call this case 2. So for case 2, m plus 1, we'll say, is not a Fibonacci number. And in this case, we have to now show that this number, since it's not a Fibonacci number itself, we have to show that it's a sum of unique Fibonacci numbers. Okay, and so here's what we'll do. Let's let capital F with a bar, Fibonacci, F for Fibonacci. So let's let F bar be the largest Fibonacci number that's less than M plus 1. Okay, this is the largest Fibonacci number less than N M plus 1. Okay, and so then what, what does that tell us? So we take the largest Fibonacci number less than m plus 1, and we can then write that m plus 1 is equal to f bar plus some other number c. So c is kind of like the remainder. Want to call it the remainder? So let's say plus r for the remainder, okay? 
And because our number here, because our number n plus 1 is not a Fibonacci number, then we know that this number n plus 1 is at least, so n plus 1 is not a Fibonacci number, right? This number has to be at least 4, because 4 is the first uh, natural number that is not a Fibonacci number. So right here, n plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 4. All right? That's part of this part of this assumption in this case right here. And so what that means then is that f is, is obviously, if it's the biggest Fibonacci number less than n plus 1, it's at least 3, right? But in particular, it's bigger than 1. Okay, so this is our next, or our next statement here. f bar has to be bigger than or equal to 1. And that means then that the remainder, the remainder is less than or equal to m. Okay, but the remainder is also strictly bigger than 0. Okay, and that's because it's a remainder, right? It's, our number is not a Fibonacci number. Um, so, there we go. R is now a number, an, a natural number, it's the remainder, natural number that's between 0 and m, it could be m, and this is where we use our induction hypothesis. Okay, so if we go back to our induction hypothesis, it says that um, every number between 0 and m, every natural number between 0 and m, is either a Fibonacci or it's the sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. Okay, and this means that we can write our remainder so therefore, the remainder, R, can be written as the sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. Now, this sum might only have one number if, if R itself is a Fibonacci number, but I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write it as R equals Fibonacci. Let's call this FJ1 plus FJ2 plus all the way up to, let's say, FJ2. Uh, did we use? We used K for something else before, but we haven't used K to mean anything in particular, solid. So let's say F, J, K right there, um, where each of these are distinct Fibonacci numbers. So these are distinct Fibonacci numbers. And I'm going to write this like this, F, J, where J is in the index set, J1, J2, up to JK. All right, so that means that really the indices here, the J1 through JK, those are unique. All right, so let's just write that out. Uh, J1 or JI is not equal to JK if I does not equal K. So those are unique. All right, well, then we've got M plus 1 is equal to Fibonacci number, F bar plus the sum of Fibonacci numbers, J, F, J1, all the way up to F, J, K, kind of an indexing nightmare. Um, but we know that these ones are distinct. The only thing we have left to verify, so these ones are definitely distinct. That's by our strong induction hypothesis. The only thing we have left to verify is that they are also distinct from F bar. Okay, they're different than F bar. So let's do this as kind of like a subproof. I'll even change the color here. Let's claim that uh, f bar is not equal to f j sub n, all right, for any n equal to 1, 2, up to k. So in other words, f bar is not equal to any, any of these Fibonacci numbers that are part of the sum that make up uh, r. What we'll do, let's prove this one by uh, contradiction. So we're gonna, I'm going to prove the claim by contradiction. So here's what we'll do. Assume or suppose that f bar equals f j for some j in this index set. All right, j1 up to jk. So under this assumption that f bar is equal to f j for some j in this index set, then we can rewrite our sum m plus 1. So I'm on a new page here, but then m plus 1 is equal to fj plus uh, the sum of all these other f's, so fj1 plus, somewhere in here is our fj, all the way up to fjk, right? And the point is here that our, if, if our f bar is a duplicate, then two of these end up here, and we can just get rid of the stuff that's left over. And so we can say then that m plus 1 
has to be greater than or equal to fj plus fj. Just keep those two and throw away all the uh, all the extras, all the extra Fibonacci numbers from this sum. All right. But of course, fj for any index fj, um, the Fibonacci number that came before it is always smaller than it. So if we go back to our Fibonacci number sequence here, these are always going to be getting bigger as you as you increase the index. The Fibonacci numbers get larger. Okay, and so this means then that this is greater than, strictly greater than, fj plus fj minus 1. So, uh, you know, this Fibonacci number plus, plus its previous one. But if you add two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, again, back to our definition, if you add two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, you actually get the next Fibonacci number. So fj plus 1. And, of course, if this number fj plus 1 is, you know, if, for anything that j is, this number is bigger, strictly bigger, actually, strictly bigger than 0, because only the first Fibonacci number is 0. And so what we have then is that there's a Fibonacci number, so this number fj plus 1 is a Fibonacci number that is greater than 0, but it's less than m plus 1. And that's the key here, right? That is less then our sum m plus 1 all right but remember how we define this f bar f bar is the um, f bar go, go back another page f bar is the largest fibonacci number that is less than m plus 1 okay but what we've just shown is that if if f bar if f bar was a duplicate of one of the fibonacci numbers that makes up the remainder then actually there's another fibonacci number that's larger than it right so f bar is is assumed to be the largest Fibonacci number less than m plus 1. And this is a contradiction, right? So this is a contradiction. And therefore, our claim is proved, right? So therefore, the claim that uh, f bar is not equal to f j sub well, fj for any j in our index set, right? 1, 2, so this is j1, j2. So when you name your indices in such a complicated way, you have to then deal with the consequences. That's what I'm doing now, right? But this is true, and so that proves the claim, right? And once the claim is proved, then uh, we're done because, therefore, um, our number m plus 1 is equal to the sum f bar plus fj1 all the way up to, so fj1 all the way up to f sub jk, um, and these are all distinct, right? All right, and so we say by strong mathematical induction, or just by strong math induction, so this, by the way, was the end of the induction step, right? We have shown that every natural number is a sum of distinct Fibonacci numbers. And this includes the case of, you can just say it like this, right? So the sum can just be a single Fibonacci number by itself. And that's the case when, when the number itself is a Fibonacci number. All right, so this is an example of how to uh, use strong mathematical induction to prove a statement. And by the way, we should, I know this video is getting pretty long, but we should very quickly, let's finish the proof, add our smiley face, uh, very quickly go back and see why did we need strong induction to begin with. And the reason for the, ne the necessity of strong induction versus some other kind of induction is this remainder right here. We don't know that this remainder is equal to m, right? In general, it's probably not going to be m. So in general, this r is not equal to m. There might only be one case where it's equal to m, or, or one very special case where it's equal to m, OK? Um, in general, it's not going to be. And so therefore, that's why we need strong induction. So this is, this, this is the need for strong induction right here. All right, hope this helps.